name is Kristen Wright and I'm going to be discussing how two-way communication is the most effective way to run an athletic department. So just a brief overview of what we're going to be discussing. Studying two-way communication and its effects on the success in an athletic department. There are several forms of communication and as long as it's a two-way street, not just a one-way, it will lead to better group cohesion, trust, and a better overall feeling in the department. The athletic director is key in modeling this um, and organizing a model of communication for the overall success of the program. So being a Christian, whether in a secular environment or um, in a place where um, maybe it's a Christian community, um, irregardless, I want to withhold my true standards of faith and what I believe in. And I'm a follower of Jesus Christ, and so I believe um, the Bible is infallible. And so... There's four principles that directly um, connect with communication. And the first is um, in Ephesians 4.15, it talks about speaking the truth in love. This is so important in athletics, um, in life in general. I think pe people um, get into a lot of problems because they avoid speaking truth and being honest. Um, on the flip side, people will be honest, but they don't do it in a loving way and both are mutually beneficial. The second is, comes from the principle in Matthew 18 in the Bible. Um, and briefly I say, I believe we should go directly to the person we take issue with, if there's an issue. And if that doesn't work, bring proper counsel if we cannot resolve the issue. Like a pastor um, or your boss, um, if that's more, more applicable. And if you can't resolve it there, then we need to, and in Matthew 18, it talks about going to um, the church and the elders of the church. I believe we should uh, use words to build one another, build up one another. And 1 Thessalonians 5, 11 talks about this. Lastly, um, I believe God made order and we should respect our authority. And Oh, two-way com communication, we're going to be comparing that to one-way communication. And I think of the most extreme version of this would be someone in history um, like Al Adolf Hitler, who was a, a, a dictator and, a, and just someone that not a lot of people um, are think very highly of um, for the most part. And so... There was clearly no two-way communication there. There was no cohesion. It was one person from the top um, working down. And as we all know, that, that does not work. It's not effective. And you lose that democratic um, together feel, which um, produces cohesion and trust and an overall sense of self-worth, which produces success. So what is two-way communication? Well, Two-way communication is a form of transmission in which both parties involved transmit information. Two-way communication has also been referred to as interpersonal communication, so the communication between two people. Common forms of two-way communication are, you can do it on a radio, um, CB or FRS, radio contacts, chat rooms, instant messaging, computer networks, um, in-person communication, telephone conversation, um, and a cycle of communication um, where you have um, a, an ongoing communication between two parties and um, you can decode and get information and feedback between the two. So here's a better picture of that. So here's the importance of it from a, a business world, and and when you run an when when I run an athletic department one day, um, 
you want to think of it almost like an effective business because there has to be order. And so I like this picture because clearly this is the boss and, and right here, he's not talking. He's, it looks like he's listening. Um, and you can tell with their body language, they all look engaged. They look happy, happy, their self-worth. Um, so a picture does say a thousand words. What it produces job satisfaction, democratic environment, um, a dynamic process. Dynamic, when I think of the word dynamic, powerful. Uh, increasing efficiency of management, making sure we're getting the most out of the people that we have working with us. Accuracy of understanding, providing suggestions. Um, as leaders, we don't always know the answers and so we need to trust our team to fill our holes. Providing acknowledgement, complete communication system, learning the reactions of the receiver, implementation of direction, evaluating the effectiveness of communication, and building a healthy relationship. So another model that compares one-way versus two-way. Over here, it's hard to understand when it's just one way sometimes. Uh, they're just spewing out information and there's no time for the receiver to give feedback to ensure that the communication was um, clear and understood. The sender is conveying a message that the receivers, without expecting the receivers to ask any questions about it. So it's that my way or the highway mentality. Two way, it's easier to understand. There's um, it, it comes both ways, both are listening, both are giving feedback, and it comes to a collective buy-in. Receivers can ask questions about the message. And that's the simplistic way of understanding it. So keys to effective communication. We want to be clear and concise when we're speaking. Um, I, even as I'm speaking right now, we want to get to the point. Um, a lot of times it leads into the next thing. We want to think and plan before we speak. A lot of leaders are impulsive and they're not thinking about A, how it can make someone else feel or if it make, is making sense. We want to prove or edit our written work because it's not just spoken work, word we're talking about. We're talking about um, writing as well because you can dialogue through emails or even letters tact and discretion we want to make sure that we're considering what we're saying and how it's making people feel understanding perception same under the same lines our tone has a huge impact um, on what's said and receiving the message Body language, um, our body language probably speaks more volumes than what actually is coming out of our mouth. Um, if I were to slump as I'm speaking and kind of look down, I'm, I'm obviously behaving unconfident and unsure of myself, but if my posture's up, regardless of what I'm saying, at least I look confident and it can change the feel of the receiver, which is, is, which is yourself. So body language is really important. Um, overall, you want it to be positive and um, non-judgmental. Non covering all major points, a lot of times covering, coming back to thinking and planning, um, a lot of administrators and leaders, athletic directors in this case specifically, which I'm covering, um, don't, don't plan, they don't think it out. They just um, hope instead of plan. And sometimes we lose key points that um, uh, our staff needed to hear, our coaches, our team needed to hear in order to give feedback and see um, if it's effective. Don't make assumptions. Um, accuracy in the facts, that's so, so key. If we're gonna say something, we need to make sure that it's truth and it's factual, um, you can, we can lose a lot of credibility as a leader if it's not actually factual. 
And then um, interjecting, it says interjecting humor there. Um, interjection of humor is really important. Um, it's just a good interpersonal skill to be able to, to, to not be too serious and to, to be able to laugh um, when appropriate. <clears throat> Expression in our messages and how that impacts receiving information. Body language, tone, active listening, creating dialogue, and assessing communication. So this is um, a little bit more in how we receive code because when we're giving, we also need to listen too because we're going to get feedback. And um, specifically, um, talking about body language when we're receiving um, if we're slumped over, our eye contact, our, even our posture says a lot, how we sit in our chair, um, a good way uh, to interpersonally connect with someone is to mirror that person um, because if we don't know them and we're getting to know them, um, and this is studying, studied in psychology, we um, we want to mirror them for a comfort level. So if they're set back, we want to model that. But if they're eager leaning forward, we want to model, model that well too. Um, that actually helps with creating rapport. So um, tone is, um, is key. Um, I would say also behind tone, um, make sure our moods are intact because it affects um, how we say things, which in turn uh, affects how we make people feel. Active listening, um, there's a difference between someone um, listening and when we know they're actually listening. And um, how we're making the people that are speaking feel is really important, valued. Um, if we're the leader and we're the boss and we're looking off into space while someone's talking, that's going to break down trust and um, it's not going to reciprocate the respect that we want as a leader as well. We first have to give it. So we want to be active, head nodding, um, yes, affirming keyword phrases that are affirming what they're saying, of course, genuinely uh, as we're listening. Creating dialogue, maybe asking questions um, to spur on the conversation. Assessing communication skills, this is key. Reflection after we speak, whether it's one-on-one, one-on-two, -on -one, one -on or in groups, we need to sit back and reflect. How was that delivered? Was that effective? Um, and sometimes one of the best ways of doing that is pulling people aside and anonymously pulling, um, pulling them or uh, pulling your whole department um, every once in a while to uh, see if you are effectively uh, communicating uh, for feedback and go to people that are honest um, with us. That's the key. Love these images. Uh, the first one up here, it says communication is a two-way process. Success is attained when all emphasis, all parties involved have the same understanding of what has been communicated. Um, communication, the power of it, the downfall of it, you're gonna have relationship, people are gonna have value, um, or it's gonna be customer based or who you're serving. Um, so in athletics, you're serving the student athletes, uh, maybe in the high school level, parents, even fans. Um, and so you're, if, with the, if communication's on point, that's going to be solid. You're going to be success, and loyalty is the key in the job, job force. Two-way communication is not always just in spoken word. You have Facebook, we have Twitter, we have uh, all these apps, and, and, and um, we want to emphasize that we live in a tech age. We live in a tech age, so sometimes it's more convenient to communicate um, for time-sensitive purposes via text or group me or social media. And um, there's pros and cons to it because there's been issues with, with that and especially with adults and students. Um, but we want to um, stay with the day and age and this is the 21st century and that's just the day and age that we, we live in. So let's talk about that a little bit. Benefits of texting and social media. 
we live in that day and age where school districts discourage administrators and coaches to communicate with players via texting or social media. Um, the reason of, 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 about that is, is obvious. They, um, there's been issues with improper relationships. Um, but we also live in the day and age where it's vital um, to use it appropriately is the key or we are gonna lose relationships and effectiveness. That's what our teens are using. Most adults are using that this day and age. And so it is appropriate for administrators and athletic directors to use it um, to enhance effective communication um, both ways, two ways, through um, texting, for example, emailing. Some data, 63% of um, students use texting to communicate only 6% use emails. It is important to use modern day technology for attention and also for time, time sensitive communication, as I said. Social media, smartphones, um, they have apps. Um, it, it makes it easy, transparent, and fast. Administration to coaches, coaches to administrations, coaches to players, players to coaches. We want to model um, what we're teaching. Organization in a department would look something like this. So if you're the head football coach, I know myself, I coach volleyball um, and I want to be here. Um, and so therefore I am there. Um, a lot of times we think of an organization and we think of an athletic director and it just trickles down. But it's really everyone all together backwards and forwards to make a successful environment. So you have the athletic director and the coach, the performance director, and sports nutrition, academic support, strength and conditioning, um, medical doc director, athletic training staff, external specialists, athletic administration team. Um, it takes a big collaborative effort. Um, and if it were just one way, it wouldn't be as effective. You're not, we're not gonna get all the feedback from everybody and the proper communication that we need to run a department. It starts small, but it gets bigger. And as you get bigger, the more communication we need. So one of the things that we have been talking about a lot is emailing. Um, within those departments, you do a lot of emailing. You don't have time to be face-to-face. -face. And email is probably the most effective and formal and professional. So the first thing is when we're emailing, um, this is your our job, this is our profession, we want to be formal. Um, if it's something that's major, we want to be patient. Um, we want to wait before we react emotionally. Um, proofread our work, have someone edit it. Omit sarcasm. Um, remember nothing is ever private. Be real in our emails, be honest. Evaluate the medium. Um, which goes kind of hand in hand with don't communicate anything that's emotional over email. That should be done face to face. Internal and external communication. So this is a huge component of communication. Um, you have internal, your inner department, your inner team, but you also have the outside world that expects to be communicated to as well. So one of the things, Stephen Covey, um, one of the greatest authors that I've um, written or read his work, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, says to begin with the end in mind, when we, Eve, every year, we need to have organization. There needs to be order. There needs to be big picture um, time frames of when we're meeting and then broken down agendas when we get to those meetings what's on the agenda so there's effectiveness so that we can hit every bullet point make sure there's collaboration in terms of what needs to go on the agenda so that we um, can be collaborating as to meeting each of the department needs and prioritizing them goals we always want to have goals we teach our student athletes to have goals, but as a department, we should be striving for goals. And we wanna come back and reflect to see if we've met them. How to's in the department. 
Um, you know, there's a time and a place and there's a process of order and respect. And so even though we're talking about two-way communication, um, we want to discuss how do we handle before it happens, when it happens, um, such as conflict resolution or how to handle basic managerial um, um, operations or um, how we report things and so on. Um, they seem small, but um, if we hit them all up front, then we'll be able to effectively do them because we all have um, a time that's sensitive and, and, and therefore lack of it. So also understanding the difference between one-on-one -on -one communication and group dynamics. There are gonna be people in our department that are better one-on-one -on -one or they need that one-on-one -on -one time. Group dynamics are different. You have a group of people. Um, also considering um, not giving um, one you know, coach, if we're overseeing them, more attention than we give all the other coaches um, in terms of equity and, and the, because time is, time is love, and, but time builds relationships. And so you wanna have imbalanced relationships. Everybody's different. Everybody um, deserves to be spent time with. Problem solving and conflict resolution kind of comes back up to the how-tos, um, but there should be specific guidelines as to how to handle that in the department. Um, both ways, from administrator to coach, from coach to administrator, um, so that there's a process and to follow. Um, the outside world, the external, um, Social media, website, bridging the gap between the academic side of the campus. That's so key, especially in the college arena. So one of my favorite quotes, um, it talks, it's talking about emotional intelligence. EQ is far greater and more important than, in, than in, um, IQ. And that's just like how intelligent we are. Um, if we have emotional intelligence, um, we may not know it all, but um, we are gonna make people feel good. And when we make people feel good, they are gonna, they're gonna wanna support us and they're gonna wanna be behind us. So this quote says, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you do, did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And that's so true, um, that's so true in a department and and um, it just comes from taking time from having humility and going back for me is putting Christ first and um, a priority in how I would run my department so two-way communication is absolutely essential in an effective um, a a athletic department and successful athletic department